Act One of Asinaria, or The Ass Dealer, by Titus Macius Plotus, translated by Henry Thomas Riley. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Dramatis Persona Domenatus, an aged Athenian, read by Todd. Argarippus, his son, in love with Philenium, read by Greg Giordano. Libanus, servant of Demonetus, read by Adrian Stevens. Leonida, servant of Demonetus, read by Redrun. The Arse Dealer, read by Alan Mapstone. Diabolus, an Athenian captain, the rival of Argarippus. Read by Beeswax Candle. A Parasite, a Dependent of Diapolis. Read by Larry Wilson. Artimona, Wife of Demainetus. Read by Sonia. Clarietta, a Procurus. Read by Anna Maria. Philenium, Daughter of Clarietta. Read by Enko. Stage Directions. Read by Estefania Vidal. Scene. Athens before the house of Clareta. The house of the Menetus is little way down another street, and in view of the audience. Prologue Attend now, spectators, if you please, forthwith to this, and may this matter to not fortunately for me and for yourselves, and for this company, and for our employers, and for our managers. Now, crier, do you at once make all the people give attentive ear? Come, be seated now, only be careful that this not for no. Now, I will tell you why I have come forward here, and what my intention is, that you might know the name of this play, for, so far as relates to the plot, it really is a short one. Now I will tell you what I said I was wishful to inform you upon. The name of this play in Greek is Onagos, the Mophilus composed it, Marcus Plotus turned it into Latin. He wishes it to be called Asinaria, if by your leaves it may be so. In this play there is both pleasantry and fun. Tis a droll story. Kindly lend me your attention. May Mars, too, as full oft at other tunes he has done, so give you now his aid. Act One, Scene One. Enter Demenetus and Libanus from the house of the former. As you desire your own only son to survive your own existence, prosperous and living on, so by your lengthened years, and by that wife of yours, of whom you stand in awe, do I conjure you that if this day you have said anything that's false against myself, your wife may then survive your own existence, and that, she living, you, still alive, may come to utter destruction." by the gods above as to what you seek to know i see that i must perforce speak out whatever you question me upon being thus conjured so determinedly have you accosted me that i really do not dare otherwise than to disclose everything to you making all these inquiries Say them at once what it is that you desire so much to know. As I myself shall know, so will I let you know. Troth, now, prithee answer me seriously what I ask you. Take care that you tell me no falsehood. Why, then, don't you ask? Will you, then, be sending me there, where stone grinds stone? What place is that? Or where in the world is that place? Where worthless men are weeping, who breakfast upon pearled barley? What that place is, or where it is, I cannot understand. Where worthless men are weeping, who breakfast upon pearled barley? Why, in the islands of clubland and rattle chain, where dead oxen attack living men? In faith, I now understand, Labanus, what place it is that perhaps you mean, where the pearled barley is prepared. 
Oh, dear, I'm not speaking of that, if faith, nor do I wish to speak of it. Troth now, prithee, do spit out the words that you have spoken. Be it so, you shall be indulged. <coughs> he coughs and spits. Come, come, walk away. What, still more? Troth now, prithee, do go on, still more. What, even from the very bottom of my throat? Even more still. Why, how long? I want you, even to the death. Take you care of a woeful mishap, if you please. Of your wife, I mean, not of yourself. For that speech... I give you leave to be free from apprehension. May the gods grant you whatever you desire. In return, give me your attention. Why should I ask this of you? Or why should I threaten you? Because you have not made me acquainted with it. Or why, in fine, should I censure my son as other fathers do? What new affair is this? Aside, I wonder much what it is, and I'm in dread what the upshot of it may be. In fact, I'm now aware that my son's in love with that courtesan Philenium that lives close by. Is not this as I say, Libanus? You are upon the right track, such is the fact, but a dreadful malady has overtaken him. What is the malady? Why, that his presents don't equal his promises. Are you, then, one who assists my son in his amours? I really am, and our Leonida is another. <sighs> in faith, you do kindly, and you gain thanks for me. But this wife of mine, Labanus, don't you know what sort of a person she is? You are the first to experience it, but we give a guess beforehand. I confess that she is troublesome and not to be pleased. You say that later than I believed you in it. All parents, Labanus, who listen to me, will show indulgence to their children, inasmuch as they will find their sons more kindly disposed and more affectionate. And that do I desire to do myself. I wish to be loved by mine. I wish myself to be like my father, who, for my sake, himself in the disguise of a shipmaster, carried off from a procurer a female with whom I was in love. Nor was he ashamed, at that time of life, to devise stratagems, and to purchase with good turns me, his son, for himself. These ways of my father have I resolved to imitate. For today my son Agrippus has entreated me to give him a supply of money for his amours, and I very much wish in that to oblige my son. I wish to forward his amours. I wish him to be fond of myself, his father." although his mother keeps him strictly, and with a tight rein, as fathers have been in the habit of doing, all that I dismiss, especially as he has deemed me deserving for him to entrust it to me. I ought to pay all due regard to his feelings, inasmuch as he has applied to me, as it is right that a respectful son should do, I wish him to have some money for him to give to his mistress. You are desiring that which I find you are desiring to no purpose. Your wife brought her servant Soria with her on a marriage, who has more in his control than you have. I received money with her, and for the portion I sold my authority. Now I'll compress into a few words what I want of you. My son is now in need of twenty silver minae. Do you manage that it may be forthwith found for him? From what place in the world? Cheat me of them. 
You are talking downright nonsense. You are bidding me take the clothes from off a naked man. I cheat you. Come, now, fly you without wings, please. What am I to cheat you, who have nothing in your power for your own self, unless you have first cheated your wife out of something? Impose upon or rob myself in any way you can. My wife in any way. My servant Soria in any way. I promise you that it shall not prove to your detriment if you affect it today. On the same principle, you might bid me fish in the air and to hunt with a javelin in the midst of the sea. Take Leonida as your coadjutor. Devise some plan or other. Think of some expedient. Bring it about that my son this day get some money to give his mistress. What say you, Demonitus? If the foe should intercept me, will ye ransom me? I will ransom you. Then do you attend to something else, whatever ye please. I'm off to the forum, unless you wish for anything. Be off. Why are you not walking? And do you hear, too? Well, now. If I want you for anything, where will you be? Wherever it shall be agreeable to my feelings. Really, there's not a person that I shall stand in dread of from this time forward, for fear he might be able to do me an injury, since, in your discourse, you have disclosed to me all your sentiments. Why, your own self even I don't stand much in awe of, if I carry this out. I'll go where I intended, and there I'll commune upon my plans. Do you hear me? I shall be with Archibulus, the banker. In the forum, you mean? There, if there shall be any occasion for me. I'll remember it. Exit. Demenitus to himself. Not any servant can there be more artful than this fellow, nor yet more crafty, nor one that it is more difficult for you to be on your guard against. If you want anything well managed, entrust it to this same fellow. He'd rather he should die in wretchedness than not have that quite completed which he has promised. For I know that this money is as surely forthcoming for my son as that I look upon this same walking stick. But why am I delaying to go to the forum where I had intended? Exit. Scene 2. Enter Argerepos from the house of Clarita, addressing her within. Is thus it is, me to be shut out of doors? Is this the reward that's given to me, who deserves so highly of you? To him who deserves well, you are unkind. To him who deserves ill, you are indulgent. But to your own misfortune, for now from this spot will I go to the triumvirs, and there I'll take care your names shall be. I'll punish capitally yourself and your daughter, you enticers, pests, and destruction of young men. For, compared with you, the sea is not the sea. You are a most dangerous sea. For on the sea did I find it, here have I been cleaned out of my wealth. What I have given, and what kindnesses I have done, I find them all valueless for good, and thrown away. But from henceforth, whatever harm I shall be able to do you, I will do it, and do it at your deserts. In faith I reduce you to the verge of poverty, that state from which you have risen. By my troth, I'll make you to know what you now are, and what you once were. What you were before I visited that daughter of yours, and, in my passion, bestowed upon her my affection. On coarse bread you were enjoying your life, in rags and in want. And if these you had, the special thanks did you return to all the divinities. Now, bad woman, you the same person, and tis better with you, don't know me, 
through whose means it is so from a wild beast i'll make you tame through hunger only trust me for that but i have no reason to blame your daughter herself she does not deserve it in the least she acts by your command she obeys your bidding you are her mother you too her mistress i'll revenge myself on you i'll ruin you as you are deserving and as you merit at my hands but look now the hag how she really doesn't think me worthy for her to come to and address and deprecate my resentment but see the enticer's coming out at last i think here before the door i'll address her in my own fashion as i please since i'm not allowed to do so within scene three enter clarita from her house if any purchaser should come he should not carry him away from me each single word of those for gold philippian pieces what you say wrongfully against us is good gold and silver your heart is locked up here with us at the helm of cupid with oars and with sails make haste and fly as fast as you can the further you betake yourself to sea the more the tide will bring you back to harbour faith i'll be depriving this custom-house officer of his dues from henceforth i'll persist in treating you as you have deserved of me and mine since you have treated me not as i deserve in excluding me from your house i know that that is rather said with the tongue than that it will happen indeed i alone have brought you from obscurity and from want if i alone patronize you you can never return sufficient thanks do you still be the only one to patronize me if you alone will always give me what i ask do you always keep what has been promised you on this condition that you surpass others in your presence what limit is there to be to giving for really you can never be satisfied the moment that you have received something not very long after you are devising something for you to be asking for what limit is there to be to your enjoying yourself and to your indulging your amour can you never be satisfied the moment that you have sent her home that instant you are directly asking me to send her back to you in fact i have given whatever you have demanded of me and i have sent the damsel to you a requital has been given like for like a return for the money you treat me badly why do you blame me if i do my duty for nowhere is it either feigned in story or represented in pictures or written in poems where procurus who wishes to thrive treats any lover well still were right for you to show favor to me at least that i might last the longer for you don't you know the woman that shows favor to a lover that same woman shows little favor to herself just like a fish so is a lover to a procurus he's good for nothing if he isn't fresh then it has juice then it has sweetness in any fashion you like you may season it either stewed or roasted in any way that you will you may turn it so the lover he's ready to give he longs for something to be asked of him for there it's taken from a full stock nor does he know what he's giving or what mischief he's doing of this matter does the new lover think he wishes himself to please his mistress he wishes to please me he wishes to please her lady's maid he wishes to please the men servants he wishes to please the maid servants as well and even my dog does he caress that when it sees him it may be delighted i tell the truth it shows cleverness for every person to be fair dealing for his own advantage i've thoroughly learned that this is true to my own great misfortune if faith if you now had anything to give you'd be uttering different remarks now since you've got nothing you expect to be having her by means of harsh language tis not my way nor yet mine indeed faith to be sending her to you for nothing but this shall be done out of regard for your youthful age and your own sake since you have rather been the cause of profit to us than of reputation to yourself 
If two talents of silver are paid me down, reckoned in my hand, this night I will grant you for nothing, as a present by reason of my respect for you. But if I haven't it? I'll believe that you haven't it. Still, she shall go to another. Where is that which I have given you already? Spent, for if it was remaining to me, the damsel should already be sent to you, and I should never ask for anything. Daylight, water, the sun, the moon, the night, these things I purchase not with money. The rest, whatever we wish to enjoy, we purchase on Grecian trust. When we ask bread of the baker, wine from the wine shop, if they receive the money, they give their wares. The same principle do I go upon. My hands always have eyes in them. They believe what they see. There's an old saying, trusting is good for naught. You know whose it is? I say no more. Now I'm clean stripped. You tell me another tale. A very different one, I say. You gave me now from formerly, when I was making presents. A different one from formerly, when with kindness and good words you used to entice me to your house. Then did your house even smile upon me when I used to come to you. You used to say that I alone, of all, loved you and her. When I had given anything, just like the young ones of a pigeon, were you both upon my lips, and all your likings were according to my own liking. You always kept close to me. Whatever I requested, whatever I wished, you used to do. What I didn't wish and forbade, that, with carefulness, you used to avoid. Or did you first venture to attempt to do it? Now, you jades, you don't much care either what I do wish or what I don't wish. Don't you know? This calling of ours is very like that of the fowler. The fowler, when he has prepared the spot, sprinkles the food about. The birds are accustomed to the spot. Tis necessary for him to make an outlay, who seeks for game. They eat often. If they are caught once, they reimburse the fowler. So in like manner here with us. Our house is the spot. I am the fowler. The courtesan is the food. The couch is the decoy. The lovers the birds. By kindly welcoming them, by addressing them courteously, by dallying, and by chattering over wine and amusing conversation, they are one. If one of them has touched her bosom, that is not without advantage to the fowler. If he has taken a kiss, him you may take without a net. That you should be forgetful of these things, you who have been schooled so long. That's your own fault. In turning away from you a scholar, half instructed come back again without hesitation if you've got the pay for the present be off pretends to go stay stay don't you hear me say what you think it fair that i should give you for her that for this year she may be with no one else what you twenty minae and on this condition if any other person shall bring them first to me to you, good-bye. But I... There's still something that I wish to say to you before you go. Say what you please. I'm not entirely ruined yet. There's still something more left for me to come to ruin. I have wherewithal to give you what you ask, but I'll give it to you on my own terms, that you may be enabled to understand that throughout all this year she is to be at my service, and that, in the meantime, she is to admit no other man whatever to her besides myself. Why, if you choose the male servants that are at home, I'll make eunuchs of. In fine, take you care and bring articles of agreement that we will be as you wish. Impose conditions upon us as you wish, and as you shall choose. Do only bring the money with you. I'll readily put up the rest. The doors of procurers are very like those of a custom house officer. If you bring anything, then they are opened. If there is nothing for you to give, then the doors are not opened. Goes into her house. Argyripus to himself. I'm undone. If I don't procure these twenty minae, 
and really as i make away with this much money i must come to destruction now i'll go to the forum and make trial with my resources with all my endeavours i'll beg i'll earnestly entreat each friend as i see him both good and bad am i determined to apply to and make trial of but if i can't borrow it i'll take it up at interest i'm resolved goes into the house of demenetus end of act one Act two of Asinaria or the Ass Dealer by Titus Macius Plotus, translated by Henry Thomas Riley. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Act two, scene one. Enter Libanus from the house of the Menetus. Upon my faith, Libanus, it really were better for you now to be waking and to be devising some plan for procuring the money a long time now has elapsed since you parted with your master and went to the forum for that end that you might devise some plan for procuring the money there till this time of day have you been sleeping at your ease why don't you away with all slothfulness from yourself and remove all sluggishness and betake yourself again to your former dexterous ingenuity preserve your master take you care too how you do the same that other servants are wont who employ a clever ingenuity in cheating their master when shall i get it whom shall i diddle out of it whither shall i steer this fly-boat tis settled tis confirmed by auspices on each side do the birds give good omens the woodpecker and the crow are on my right the raven as well upon my left they are persuading me to it if faith i am resolved to follow your advice starts and listens but what means this that the woodpecker is tapping the elm tree that's not for nothing troth for certain so far as i can gather omens from augury the rods are in readiness for me own back or for soria the chamberlain but what means this that leonida is running this way out of breath i fear that this bodes ill for my trumped-up schemes stands apart scene two enter leonida running leonida to himself ah <sighs> where now shall i find libanus or my master's son that i may make them more mirthful than his mirth herself great booty in a triumph do i bring them on my arrival ah, inasmuch as together with me they drink together with me they are wont to wench why this booty that i've got together with them will i share it libanus apart this fellow has been robbing a house if he has been acting after his usual manner woe to the person that has so carelessly kept the door leonida to himself i could be ready to be a slave for an age if i could only meet with libanus libanus apart if i with my assistance indeed you shall never be free a bit the sooner leonida to himself i'd give two hundred teeming lashes on my back as well libanus apart he's giving away all his substance for he carries his treasures on his back leonida to himself but if time should intervene upon this opportunity never upon my faith will he hereafter obtain it again even with white horses he'll be deserting his master in the siege he'll be increasing the courage of the foe but if with me he is desirous to seize hold upon this opportunity which has presented itself very great bounties brimful of joyousness will he together with myself be producing for his masters both for the son and the father ah, so that for life they will be indebted to us both bound by our services libanus apart he's talking of persons being bound 
I don't know who. I don't like it. I fear for us in common, lest he may have been cheating in some cheatery. Leonida to himself. Ah, I'm utterly undone, unless I find Libanus at once, wherever in the world he is. Libanus, apart. This fellow's looking out for an accomplice to unite with himself in a bad design. I don't like it. Tis a portentous sign that instant, when a person trembles that sweats. Leonida to himself. But why, as I hasten, do I loiter here with my feet, and make myself so bounteous with my tongue? Why don't I bid it be quiet, that in its talkativeness is wearing out the day? Libanus apart. Upon my faith, an unfortunate man, to check his patroness, for if he has done anything roguishly, his tongue purges itself in his behalf. Leonida to himself. I'll make haste lest I should be providing a safe keeping for my spoil too late. Libanus apart. What spoil is this? I'll go meet him and inquire what it is. He accosts him. I wish you health in as loud a voice as my strength admits of. Ah, exerciser of the whip, health to you. Keeper of the jail, how do you do? Ha, colonizer of the chains. Ah, delight of the scourges. When naked, how many pounds do you say you are in weight? Upon my faith, I don't know. I know that you don't know. But, if faith, I who have weighed you do know. Tied up naked, you were a hundred pounds in weight when you were hanging with your feet downwards. On what evidence is that? I'll tell you on what evidence, and in what way. When you are tied up with a full hundred pounds to your feet, when the manacles are fastened to your hands and tied to the beam, you are weighing neither more nor less than as being a worthless and good-for-nothing fellow. Woe be to you! That servitude bequeaths to you by her will. I wish this skirmishing of words to be cut short. What matter is this? Am I sure in trusting you? You may, without hesitation. If you wish to assist our master's son in his amour, there is so much of a good opportunity on a sudden, but still mingled with evil. All the hangman's days will be rendered famous by ourselves, Libanus, now we have occasion to find some boldness and inventiveness. An exploit so great have I thought of just now, that we too may be pronounced the most deserving of all for torture to befall us. "'Twas on that account I was wondering why my shoulder-blades were aching just now, which were beginning to prognosticate that there was some danger for them at home. Whatever it is, speak out. "'Tis great booty with great risk.' If indeed all persons by compact were to collect all the tortures, I have, I fancy, a back at home, so that I need not seek it out of doors. If you maintain such firmness of resolve, then we are all right. Why, if the matter were to be atoned for by my back, I could wish to seize the public money. I'll persist in my denial, and I'll endure all. In fine... I'll forswear myself. Ah, that's true, Valor, when occasion is, for one to endure misfortune with boldness. He that endures misfortune with boldness, that man afterwards enjoys good fortune. Why don't you tell the matter at once? I'm longing to tempt the scourge. <sighs> Ask deliberately each particular, then, that I may rest me. Don't you see that I'm still out of breath with running? Well, well, I'll wait your pleasure even, in fact, till you die. Where's our master, pray? The old one is at the forum. The young one is here indoors. That's enough for me, then. Is it then that you've become a rich man? Leave off your raillery. I'll have done, for my ears are in expectation of what you are bringing me give your attention that equally with myself you may learn this i'm silent then you oblige me 
Don't you remember that our Chamberlain sold some Arcadian asses to a dealer of Pella? I remember it. After that, what then? Well, he has sent some money here then to be paid to Soria for the asses. A young man has just now come who has brought this money. Where is this person? You think he ought to be devoured this instant if you could see him. Aye, to be sure. But however, you are speaking, I suppose, of those asses, aged and lame, whose hooves were quite worn away at their very thighs. Those same ones that carried the elm twigs hither from the country for your use. I understand you, and the same ones carried you from here, bound into the country. You say what's quite correct. But, as I was sitting in the barber's shop, he began to make inquiries of me, whether I knew a certain Demanitus, the son of Strato. At once I said that I knew him, and that I was his servant, and I pointed out our house. After that, what then? He said that he was bringing the money for the asses to the Chamberlain Soria, twenty minae in amount, but that he himself didn't know the individual, who he was, but that he knew Demanitus quite well. Since he spoke thus to this effect... What then? <laughs> Listen, then, and you'll know. At once I made myself courteous, and a person of consequence. I said that I was the Chamberlain. Thus in these terms did he answer me. Upon my faith I don't know Soria, nor yet of what appearance he is. It isn't fair for you to blame me, but, if you like, bring here Demanitus, your master, whom I do know. I'll not prevent you taking the money then. I said that I would bring him, and that I should be at home immediately. He's about to go to the baths. From there he'll afterwards come here. What plan do you think now I ought to adopt? Tell me. Why, I'm thinking of this, how to get between the money and the stranger and Soria. At present this matter is rough-hewn, but if this stranger brings here the money first, then are we both at once shut out from it. But the old man to-day took me apart at a distance from the house, and threatened me and yourself that we should be tasters of the elm-twigs, if our Jiripus didn't this very day get twenty minai of silver. He commanded that we should cheat either the Chamberlain or his own wife, and said that he would give the aid he promised. Now, do you go to the forum to our master, and tell him this, how we are going to manage, that you from Leonida are going to be the Chamberlain Soria until the dealer has brought the money for the asses. I'll do as you request me. In the meantime, I'll amuse him here, if by chance he should come first. But... What say you? What do you want? If I give you a blow on the cheek with my fist by and by, while I'm personating Soria, don't you be offended. If faith, but you'll have a care not to be touching me, if you are wise. You'll surely have changed your name to-day with a bad omen. Prithee, do endure it with resolution. Do you endure the cuff? that I, too, shall be giving you in return? I speak as it's in the habit of being done. If faith, and I speak, too, of how I'm likely to act. Don't refuse me. Why, I promise, I tell you, to give you a like return, just as you deserve. I'm off. I know that you'll put up with it by and by. But who's this? Tis he, tis the very man himself. I'll return here just now. In the meantime, do you detain him here? I want to inform the old gentleman. Exit. Well, do your duty, then, and fly. Scene 3. Enter the ass-dealer with a boy. Ass-dealer to himself. According to as it was pointed out to me, this must be the house where Demenatus is said to live. To the boy. Go, boy, and knock and call Saria, the chamberlain, out here, if he's indoors. The boy goes to knock. Who's breaking in at our door in this fashion? Enough there, I say, if you hear me at all. 
no one has touched it as yet are you out of your senses why i thought that you had touched it because you were steering your course in that direction i don't want the door my fellow-slave to be thumped by you i really am attached to our house e faith there's no fear of the hinges being broken off the doors if you answer all who make inquiries in this fashion this door is of this habit it cries out at once for the porter if it sees any door kicker at a distance coming towards it but what are you come for what are you inquiring about i wanted demenatus if he were at home i would tell you so well he's chamberlain then no more is he at home where is he he said he was going to the barber's hasn't he returned since he went there i faith he hasn't what did you want he was to have received twenty minae of silver if he had been in what was it for he sold some asses at the market to a dealer from pella i understand you are bringing it now i think that he'll be here just now of what appearance is your chamberlain seria if it's he i shall be able to know at once lantern jawed with reddish hair a little pot-bellied with glaring eyes middling stature sour aspect a painter couldn't have more correctly described his appearance and e faith i see the very man he's coming this way wagging his head whoever gets in his way when he's in a passion he'll be for striking him by my faith if indeed he were coming filled with the threats and the courage of the grandson of achus if he were to touch me in his wrath in his wrath he would be getting a thrashing scene four enter leonida counterfeiting sauria leonida to himself what's this to do here not a person cares a bit about my orders how did i order libanus to come to the barber's shop and he didn't come at all if faith for sure he hasn't consulted well for his back and his legs a stealer to himself this is a very overbearing fellow libanus to the ass dealer woe to me this day i bid welcome to libanus the freedman are you set at liberty now i do implore you in good sooth to your great misfortune surely have you fallen in my way why didn't you come to the barber's shop as i ordered you libanus pointing to the ass dealer this person detained me if faith if in fact you were now to say that supreme jove had detained you and he were present to sue for you you shouldn't escape the evil consequences whip knave did you disobey my orders offers to strike him libanus to the ass dealer stranger i'm done for prithee sarah for my sake don't beat him i wish now i had a whip in my hand prithee do be appeased with which to lash your sides which have grown callous with blows to the ass dealer who interposes stand off this way let me be the death of this fellow who is continually inflaming me with anger a thief to whom i can never once enjoin a single thing but that i must command the same thing a hundred times and din them in his ears for that reason now by my troth what with bawling and passion i cannot endure the labour have you rascal pointing ordered this dirt to be removed hence from the door have you ordered the labours of the spiders to be swept down from the pillars have you ordered those bosses on our door to be brought to brightness it's of no use i must walk about with a stick as though i were a lame man because only for these single three days i've been giving my constant attendance at the forum in order to find some one who requires money upon interest here in the meantime are you sleeping at home and my master is living in a pigsty not in a house he strikes libanus 
There now, take you that. Libanus to the ass dealer. Prithee, stranger, do take my part. Saria, for my sake, I entreat you, do let him go. Hark you, has any one paid for the carriage of that olive oil? He has paid. To whom was it given? To Stickus himself, your deputy. Tut, you're trying to mollify me. I know that he is my deputy, and that there isn't a servant in the house who is more valuable to his master than he is. But the wines that I sold yesterday to Exarambus, the wine merchant, has he yet paid Stickus for them? I think he has in full, for I saw Exarambus himself bringing hither his banker. On such terms would I always deal. Before what I've trusted, I've hardly been paid within a year after. Now he's quite in a hurry, even of his own accord he brings him to the house, and writes a transfer of the money. Has Dromo paid down the wages agreed upon? Less than half, I think. What about the remainder? He said that he would pay it directly it was paid to him, for it was retained until he had finished the work that was agreed on to be done by him. The cups that I lent to Philodamus, has he brought them back? Not yet. What, not yet? If you wish to make a present, lend to a person that is a friend. As dealer aside. E faith, I'm quite undone. He'll be just now driving me away with his ill temper. Libanus in a low voice to Leonida. Hello. You enough now? Do you hear what he's saying? I hear, and I'll have done. As dealer aside. At last I think he's done. Now it's best to accost him before he commences again to prate. To Leonida. How soon, sir, will you give me your attention? Oh, by all means. Have you been here any time? Troth, I didn't observe you. Pray don't lay it to my charge. Anger has so blinded my eyesight. Tisn't to be wondered at. But if he's at home, I was wanting Domenitus. Libanus says that he isn't within. But still, if you would like to pay that money over to me, I'll give you an acquittance that the account is discharged as to that item. This way, rather, for me to pay you in the presence of your master, Domenitus. My master knows him, and he, my master. In his master's presence I'll pay him. At my peril, so you only pay him. I'll engage the matter's safe. For if our old gentleman were to know that confidence wasn't placed in him, to whom he himself always entrusts the management of all matters, he would be angry. I don't much care. Don't let him not pay it if he don't like. So let him stand here. Give it him, I say. Oh dear, I'm sadly afraid that he'll be thinking that I've persuaded you not to trust him. Prithee, do give it, and don't be afraid. Upon my word, it will be safe. I think it will be, so long indeed as I myself keep it in my hand. I'm a stranger. I don't know, Saria. Well, know him now, then. It may be he, it may not be he. If faith, I don't know. If it's he, why then it must be he. I know for sure that I shall give this up to no person that I don't know. Leonida aside. Troth now, may all the gods confound the fellow. Aloud to Libanus. Take care you don't entreat him with a word. He's arrogant because he's fingering my twenty minae. No one will take it. To the ass dealer. Take yourself off home. Be off from here and don't be troublesome. You are in too angry mood. It isn't right for a person who is a slave to give himself airs. By my own faith, to your own great misfortune, now are you talking uncivilly to him? Dirty, worthless fellow. Don't you see he's angry? Leonida to the ass dealer. Be off, then. 
Libanus to the ass dealer. Scoundrelly fellow. Aside to him. Prithee, do give him the money, lest he should abuse you. On my word, you are seeking evil for yourselves. Leonida to Libanus. By the powers, your legs shall be broken if you don't proclaim this shameless fellow. Troth, I'm undone. Be off, you shameless fellow. You rascal. Libanus to the ass dealer. Won't you venture to assist me, you rascal? Do you persist in soliciting the scamp? As this? To Leonida. Do you, rascal, who are a slave, speak abusively to a free man? Give him a beating. By my faith, that surely shall be for yourself to get a beating as soon as ever I shall see Demenatus this day. I summon you to judgment. I shan't go. You won't go? Remember? I do remember. Hey, faith, I'll have satisfaction out of your back. Woe unto you. What, villain, satisfaction to be given by us to you, indeed? Aye, and even this very day satisfaction shall be given me for your abusive language. How now, whip-knave? How say you, hang-dog? Do you suppose that we should run away from our master? Go this instant, then, to our master where you were citing us just now, and where you were wishing to go. What, now at last? Still, you shall never get a coin of money away from me, unless Demenatus shall order me to give it. Do so. Come, move on, then. Are you to offer insults to another person, and are they not to be repeated to yourself? I'm a man as much as you are no doubt such is the fact follow me this way then with your good leave i would now say this not a person has ever accused me by reason of my deserving it nor is there in athens one other individual this day whom they would think they could as safely trust perhaps so but still you shall never this day persuade me to entrust to you whom i don't know this money a man to a man is a wolf not a man when the other doesn't know of what character he is now at last you are appeasing me i was sure that this day you would give satisfaction to this poor head of mine although i'm in mean garb still i'm well to do nor can an estimate of my means be formed from it perhaps so still more than i tell you Periphanes, a merchant of Rhodes, a rich man, in the absence of my master, himself alone paid over to me in private a talent of silver, and trusted me, nor was he deceived in it. Perhaps so. And you, too, yourself as well, if you had inquired about me of other people, would, if faith, I'm sure, have entrusted to me that which you now have with you. Oh, don't deny it. Exant. End of Act Two. Act Three of Asinaria or The Ass Dealer by Titus Magius Plotus, translated by Henry Thomas Riley. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Act Three, Scene One. Entered Clareta and Philenium from the house of the former. And am I unable to render you obedient to my injunctions? Or are you so disposed as to be free from the control of your mother? How could I propitiate piety if I could desire to please you, being endowed with these manners after the fashion, mother, that you enjoin upon me? Is it consistent with propriety for you to oppose my precepts? How so? Is this worshipping piety to lessen the authority of a mother? Those who act right I blame not, nor do I love those who do wrong. You are a very prating, lovesick girl. Mother, that is my living. His tongue woos me, his person seeks me, his passion pleads, opportunity prompts. I was purposing to convince you. 
are you come as my accuser? By my troth, I neither do accuse you, nor do I think it right I should do so. But I do complain of my lot, when I am separated from him whom I love. Will then one bit of the whole day's talk be left for myself? Both my share of the speaking and your own do I give up to you. Do you yourself have the signal, both for speaking and for being silent? But I have faith, if I only put up my oars in the boathouse, while I am resting, all the welfare of the household is at a standstill for you. How say you, the out-and-out most insolent woman that I ever saw? How often have I forbidden you to speak to Agrippus, the son of Demanitus, or to touch him, or to hold discourse with him, or to look at him? What has he ever given? What has he ordered to be brought to our house? Or do you fancy to yourself that smooth words are gold? That clever speeches are as good as presents? Of your own accord you fell in love with him. Of your own accord you go after him. Of your own accord you request him to be sent for to you. Those who are givers, those same you laugh at, those who are cheating us you are dying for. If anyone promises you that he'll make you rich when his mother dies, ought you to be waiting for that? If faith, a great risk, impends over ourselves and the household that we may die of hunger while we are awaiting her death. Now, therefore, unless he brings me here twenty minae of silver, upon my word, though profuse of his tears, he shall certainly be turned from here out of doors. This day's the end of excuses for poverty at my house. If, my mother, you were to order me to go without victuals, I would submit. I don't forbid you to love those who give that for the sake of which they ought to be loved. What, mother, if this inclination of mine is fixed, what am I to do? Tell me. Oh, dear, look at my head, if indeed you consider your own interest. Even the shepherd, mother, that feeds the sheep of another, has a certain one of his own to be the consoler of his hopes. For the sake of my affection, do allow me to love Agrippus only, who is my choice. Go indoors, for upon my word, there is really nothing more impudent than yourself. Mother, you have given birth to a daughter obedient to your commands. They go into the house. Scene two. Enter Leonida and Libanus. Great praise and thanks we give, deservedly, to perfidy, when, relying upon our tricks, our stratagems, and our devices, upon our confidence in our shoulder-blades, and the hardihood resulting from the elm-twigs so oft applied, against the whips, the searing irons, the crosses, and the fetters, the cords, the chains, the prisons, the stocks, the shackles, the collars, the taskmasters most cruel and well acquainted with our backs, who many a time before have imprinted scars upon our shoulder-blades by conquering now these legions troops and armies of thieves by our prowess through our perjuries o brave have we gained the victory this through the valour of this comrade of mine and through my own courtesy has been brought about what man is there more firm than myself at enduring stripes by the powers you who can extol your exploits now as i can do exploits which in peace and in warfare you have so villainously performed verily in troth many in number may they be now recounted according to your deserts where you have defrauded him that trusted you where you have proved faithless to your master where knowingly and wilfully you have on solemn oath been perjured where you have bored through party walls where you have been detected in theft where you have full oft pleaded your cause as you hung up against eight clever hardened fellows sturdy stripers certainly i do admit leonida that it is true as you say but verily in truth your many misdeeds too may be recounted as well and truly where wilfully you have proved faithless to the trusting where you have been detected in theft and scourged in public where you have proved forsworn where you have laid hands on sacred things where to your masters you have full oft proved a loss a trouble and a disgrace where you have stoutly denied that that was given to you which had been entrusted to you where you have proved more faithful to your wench 
than to your friend, where, through your hardihood, you had frequently reduced to weariness eight sturdy lictors, armed with pliant twigs of elm. To the audience. Is the compliment ill repaid in the way that I've praised my comrade? Just as befits both me and yourself, and our dispositions. Now, drop this, and answer me this that I ask. Inquire of me what you please. Have you got the twenty silver minai? Guess. Upon my word, the old gentleman, Demenitus, has been very obliging to us. How cleverly he pretended that I was Soria. With the greatest difficulty did I withhold my laughter when he rebuked the stranger because in his absence he had been unwilling to put confidence in me. And with what readiness did he call me Soria the Chamberlain? Stop a moment. What's the matter? Isn't this Philanium that's coming from indoors and Argiripus with her? Keep silence. Tis he. Let's listen quietly to them. In tears she holds him, weeping, by the lappet of his garment. What, I wonder, am I to say is the matter? Let's listen in silence. Dear me, a thought, in faith, has just come into my mind. I very much wish I had a long stick here. For what reason? With which to beat these asses, if they should begin to bray out here from within the bag. They stand apart. Scene three. Enter Argyrippus from the house of Clareta, followed by Philenium. Why are you holding me back? Because as I love you, I cannot bear your departing. Farewell. I should fare somewhat better if you were to remain here. Blessings on you. Do you wish for blessings on me, to whom you are bringing disease by your departure? Your mother has bid me the last farewell. She has requested me to go home. A bitter death will she cause her daughter if I must part from you. Libanus, apart to Leonida. Troth, now, the man has been turned out of doors there. Such is the fact. Prithee, do let me go. Whither are you going now? Why don't you stay here? This night, if you choose, I'll stay. Libanus, apart. Don't you hear him? How profuse he is of his attentions by night. But now, in the daytime, he's engaged. Surely he's a solon to write laws whereby the public may regulate itself. Sure, those who would be in readiness for themselves to pay obedience to his laws would decidedly never do any good. They would be drinking night and day. Troth now. For sure, he wouldn't budge a foot from her if she would let him, who is now in such haste, and is threatening that he's going away from her. Now, make an end of your talk, that I may catch his discourse. Farewell. Whither are you hastening? Kindly, fare you well. I shall see you in the other world. For indeed now, so soon as I can, I shall sever myself from life prithee why while i do not deserve it do you wish to consign me to death i you whom if i were to hear that you were in want of life at once would i present you my own life and from my own would add to yours why then do you threaten that you will quit life for what do you suppose that i shall do if you do that which you are talking of I'm determined to do everything exactly the same to myself that you do to yourself. Oh, sweeter than honey are you to me. And surely you are my life. Embrace me. I do so with pleasure. They embrace. Would that thus we might be carried to the tomb? Leonida, apart. Oh, Libanus, how wretched is the man that loves. Aye, but surely, Faith... The man that's hanging up is much more wretched. I know that, who have had experience of it. Let's go round them. Let's accost them, one on the one side, one on the other. One walks towards them from each side. Health to you, master. 
but is this female smoke that you're embracing why so because your eyes are filled with tears twas for that reason i asked one who would have been a protector to you you have lost if faith i surely haven't lost one for this reason because i never had one health to you philenium what you desire the gods will give you i could desire your favours and a cask of wine if wishes were to come to pass whip knave beware how you speak a word why tis for you not for myself i wish it for that reason then say on what you please libanus pointing to leonida troth i'd like to give him a beating who pray would allow you to do so you frizzle-pated montebank could you thrash me you who reckon as your daily food your own thrashings how far superior libanus are your lots to my own who never will live this day until the evening for what reason prithee argyrippus pointing to philenium because i'm in love with her and she's in love with me and nowhere have i anything to bestow upon her for that reason has her mother expelled me with all my affection from her house the twenty minae of silver have brought me to my end which the young man diabolus declared that he would give her this day in order that she might not send her anywhere for this whole year except to himself don't you see of what force are twenty minae of silver or what they can effect the man who parts with them is happy i who part not with them am undone has he already paid the money he hasn't paid it be of good courage don't be afraid leonida to libanus step this way libanus i want you certainly if you want anything steps aside putting his hand on the shoulder of leonida i entreat of you it is more pleasant in this same matter for you to discourse hugging one another understand master that all things are not equally sweet to all persons tis pleasant for you lovers to converse hugging one another i care nothing for his hugging pointing to leonida and pointing to philenium she despises mine do you then yourself do that which you would be suggesting to us to do indeed i will and really with pleasure and faith placing his arm around philenium's neck in the meantime if it seems good to you do you step aside there leonida to libanus should you like our master to be bantered a bit he really is deserving of it should you like me in his presence to make philenium embrace me if faith i should like it follow me this way they join argyrippus is there any escape at all have you conversed enough listen and give attention and devour my words first of all that we are your slaves we don't deny but if twenty silver minae are forthcoming for you by what name will you call us freed men and not patrons that in preference leonida produces the bag here are twenty minae in this bag these if you like i'll give you may the deities ever preserve you protector of your master honour to the people treasury of resources preserver of my inner man and commander of love place it here put down that bag here on the spot at once i don't like you who are my master to carry this load still do you rid yourself of the trouble and fasten that bag to myself i'll carry it porter-like you as befits my master go without any burden before me how now why's this why don't you give up the bag here 
for your master to feel its weight bid her to whom i am about to give it to beg and entreat it of me for that's a dangerous spot where you bid me put it down at once philenium to leonida apple of my eye my rose my life my delight leonida do give me the money and don't sever us lovers asunder leonida to philenium call me then your little sparrow your chicken your quail your pet lamb say that i'm your pet kid or your pet calf take me by the ears press your lips to my lips she kiss you you whip scoundrel really how unbecoming it does seem but by the powers you shan't get it this day if my knees are not embraced argyrippus aside necessity compels to anything to leonida let them be embraced kneels down and embraces his knees now give what i'm asking for come my leonida prithee do bring safety to your master thus is love redeem yourself from him by this service and purchase him for yourself with this money you are very pretty and amiable and if this were mine you should never this day ask me for it but i would give it to you tis better for you to ask it of him pointing to libanus for twas he gave it me to keep for him approach him then prettily my pretty one delivers the bag to libanus take this please libanus scoundrel are you still trifling with me in faith i should never have done so if you hadn't embraced my knees so roughly aside to libanus come please in your turn do at once have some sport with him and give her an embrace libanus aside to leonida hold your tongue trust me for that why don't we accost him bellinium pointing to libanus really a very worthy fellow upon my faith and not like this thief pointing to leonida libanus aside to leonida we must walk up and down now in my turn they'll be entreating me by heaven libanus i do entreat you be pleased by your deeds to come to your master's rescue do give me those twenty minae you see that thus in love i stand in need of them it shall be seen to i wish it done return here at nightfall now bid her have us a little to beg and entreat them of me philenium to libanus do you wish me to begin with caressing or with kissing you why really with them both and do you then i do entreat you prove the saving of us both oh libanus my patron do give me that tis more becoming for the freed man than for the patron to be carrying a burden in the street my libanus golden apple of my eye the gift and the very grace of love there's a dear whatever you wish i'll do prithee do give us that money call me then your little duck dove or your puppet your swallow jackdaw little sparrow your mannikin make of me the reptile that crawls so that i may have a double tongue enfold me in your arms and embrace my neck she embrace you villain really how undeserving i do seem you shan't for no purpose have uttered a speech so unseemly against me by my troth if indeed you expect to get this money this day you shall carry myself on your shoulders what i carry you otherwise you shan't get this money from me heavens i'm undone still if indeed it is decorous for the master to carry the servant mount in this way a proud people want to be tamed stand still then just as you were wont to do when formerly a boy do you understand what i say he prepares to get upon the shoulders of Argyrippus. Aye, so, move on. I praise you much. Not any horse is there more clever than yourself as an horse. Argyrippus, while stooping. 
Get on directly. I'll do so. He gets on. Hello. What's the matter? How are you going? By my troth, I'll deprive you of your barley, then, if you don't amble lifting up your feet. Prithee, Libanus, there's enough now. Never this day, by my troth, shall you get anything by entreaty. For now, uphill with the spur, will I push on my steed. After that, I'll deliver you to the millers, that there you may be tortured as you run. Stand still, that I may now at once get down for the hill, although you are but a bad one. Gets off his shoulders. Well now, since you've both made fun of me, just as you liked, are you going to give the money? Why, yes, if indeed you erect to me a statue and an altar, and then sacrifice an ox to me here as though to a god, for I am the divinity salvation to you. Nay, but master, do betake yourself away from him, and do you come to me? And what has he demanded for himself? Will you erect a statue for me, and offer prayers to me? But what divinity am I to call you? Fortune, and that the propitious one. You are better than he, then? Why, is there ever anything better for a man than salvation? Though I praise fortune, still not speak in dispraise of the divinity salvation. By the powers, but they are good, both of them. I shall know it when they have conferred anything that's good. Wish for that which you desire to befall you. What if I do wish it? It shall come to pass. I wish for her to be devoted to me alone this whole year round. You have obtained it. Do you really say so? I do say so, for certain. Come to me in my turn, and make trial. Wish ardently for that which you especially desire to happen to you. It shall be done. What other thing could I ardently wish for rather than that of which I am in want? Oblige me with twenty silver minae to give to her mother. They shall be given. Take care and be of good courage. Your wishes shall be fulfilled. Just as they are wont, salvation and fortune are deceiving mortals. I this day have been the head in finding this money for you. I have been the foot. Why, neither head nor foot of your talking is visible. I can understand neither what you mean or why you are trifling with me. I think that now you've been teased enough. Now let's disclose the matter as it really stands. Give your attention, Angiripus, if you please. Your father has ordered us to bring this money to you. How very apropos and opportunely you have brought it. Libanus giving him the bag. Here, in this... There will be twenty good minae obtained by bad means. These, on certain conditions, he bade us give you. Prithee, what are they? That you would grant him her favours and an entertainment. Bid him come, I beg, for him who deserves it right well will do what he wishes. Him who has brought these scattered loves of ours to a happy result. You'll permit your father, then, Argorippus, to caress her? She, by being restored to me, will easily cause me to permit it. Prithee, Leonida, run, and beg my father to come here. He has been in the house some time. He hasn't come this way, at all events. Libanus pointing to the back way. He came round that way, by the lane, through the garden, lest any one of his friends should see him coming here. He's afraid that his wife may come to know of it. If your mother knew about the money, how it was obtained. Well, well, do use words of good omen. Go indoors quickly. Farewell. And you too, love on. 
he and Libanus go into the house of Demenetus, Agrippus and Philenium into that of Clarieta. End of Act 3《Act IV of Asinaria or The Ass Dealer》by Titus Maccius Plotus, translated by Henry Thomas Riley. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Act IV, Scene I. Enter Diabolos and a parasite with a scroll in his hand. Come now, show me this agreement that you've written up between myself and the procuress. Read over the conditions, for you are a quite unique composer in such matters. I'll make the procuress be terrified when she hears the conditions. My troth now, prithee, proceed and read them over to me. Are you attending? I am all attention. Parasite reads the agreement. Diabolus, the son of Glaucus, has made a present to Clarita the procuress of twenty silver minae, that Philinium may be with him night and day for this whole year. Yes, and not with any other person. Uh, am I to add that? Add it, and take care, and write it plainly and distinctly. Parasite writes it down, and then reads. And uh, not admit any other man whatever, because either her friend or her patron she may choose to call him not any one or because she may say that he is the lover of a female friend of hers the door must be closed to all men except to yourself on the door she must write that she is engaged or because she may affirm that the letter has been brought from abroad there is not to be even any letter in the house nor so much as a waxed tablet and if there is any useless picture let her sell it if she does not part with it within four days from the time when she has received the money of you let it be considered as your own you to burn it if you like so that she may have no wax with which she may be able to make a letter she is to invite no guest you are to invite them on no one of them is she to cast her eyes if she looks upon any other person she must be blind forthwith then she is to drink cup by cup equally with yourself she is to receive it from you she is to hand it to you for you to drink she is not to have a relish for less or for more than yourself that's quite to my taste parasite reading she is to remove all causes of suspicion from her nor is she to tread on any man's foot with her foot. When she rises, she is neither to step upon the next couch, nor when she gets down from the couch, is she thence to extend her hand to any one. She is not to give to, nor ask of any one, a ring for her to look at. She is not to present dice to any man, whatever, except to yourself. When she throws them, she is not to say, You I call upon. She is to mention your name. She may call on any goddess that she pleases as propitious to her, but on no god. If she should chance to be very full of devotion, she is to tell you, and you are to pray to him, that he may be propitious. She is neither to nod at any man, wink, or make a sign. In fine, if the lamp goes out, she is not to move a single joint of herself in the dark that's very good so in fact she must do but expunge that about the chamber for my part i prefer that she should move i don't wish her to have an excuse to say that it is forbidden her by her vow i understand you fear some quibble just so then just as you bid me i'll strike it out erases it and why not hear the rest say on i'm listening parasite goes on reading and she is not to use any shuffling words nor is she to know how to speak in any tongue but the attic if perchance she should begin to cough she is not to cough so as to expose her tongue to any one in coughing but if she should pretend as though she had a running at the nose even then she is not to do so you yourself must wipe her lips 
rather than it be she should open her mouth before another person and her mother the procuress is not to come in in the middle of the wine nor is she to utter a word of abuse to any one if she does so speak let this be her fine to go for twenty days without wine you have written it nicely a clever agreement then if she bids her maid-servant carry chaplets garlands or unguents to venus or to cupid your servant is to watch whether she gives them to venus or to a man if perchance she should say she wishes to keep herself in purity let her account for as many nights as she has kept herself in purity these are no trifles for they are no funeral dirge the conditions please me entirely follow me indoors they go into the house of clareta end of act four act five of asinaria or the ass dealer by titus Maccius plotus translated by henry thomas riley this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit LibriVox.org. act five one scene at least is clearly lost here as we are not informed how diabolus has become acquainted with the manoeuvres to obtain the money and the disgraceful compact made by Domenitus although not improbably he caught sight of him in the house of the procurers scene one enter diabolus and the parasite follow this way am i to put up with this or shall i hold my tongue i would rather die than not discover this to his wife and say you so old man with a mistress would you be acting the part of a youngster would you be excusing yourself to your wife and calling yourself an aged man would you be taking the mistress from her lover? And would you be presenting the money to the procuress and be secretly pilfering it from your wife at home? You should hang me, rather than you should carry off these matters undiscovered. On my honour, I really go this instant hence to her, whom I am sure that you will very soon be destroying, in order that you may be able to supply your extravagance unless indeed she shall first prevent you i am of opinion that thus you must act tis more becoming that i should disclose this matter rather than yourself lest she may think that you excited by reason of love rather than for her own sake have acted thus my faith you say what's right do you then contrive to raise a storm and strife against him that he, together with his own son, is carousing with one mistress the live-long day, and that he's secretly pilfering from her. Don't suggest to me. I'll take care of that. But I'll wait for you at home. Exit Diabolus. The parasite goes into the house of the Menetus. Scene 2. A table and everything requisite for an entertainment being placed before the house of Clarita. Enter Argarippus, Demenitus, and Philenium from the house of Clarita. Come then, father, let's take our places, please. As you bid me, my son, so it shall be. Argarippus to the attendants. Lads, spread the table. Is it at all displeasing to you, son, if she takes her place by me? They take their places. Duty, father keep sorrow from my eyes although i love her still i can control my feelings not to take it to heart because she takes her place by you it becomes a young man to be respectful Argarippus. troth father through proper regard for you i can be so come then let's enjoy this banquet with wine and pleasant discourse i don't wish to be feared i prefer myself to be loved by you my son in truth i do them both as is proper for a son i'd believe it if i saw you were cheerful why do you think that i am sorrowful do i think so you whom i see as melancholy as if the day of trial had been named for you 
Don't you say that. Don't you be so, then I'll not say so. Well then, look at me. I'm laughing. Ha <laughs> ha ha. He affects to laugh. I'd like that those who wish me ill would laugh thus. I know indeed, father, why you now suppose to yourself that I'm sad. It is because she is by you. And really, father, by my faith to tell you the truth, that matter does hurt me. And not for this reason, that I don't desire for you that which you wish, but because I love her. Another woman, indeed, I could easily endure to be by you. But I have a fancy for this one. Then you have what you desire. For myself, I wish for what I could desire. Submit to it this one day, since I've given you the power to be with her for a year, and have procured for you the command of money in your amour. Well, by doing that, you have laid me under an obligation to you. Why, then, don't you show yourself cheerful to me? They commence the banquet, Philenium reclining below the Menetus. Scene three. Enter Artemona and the parasite from the house of Demenetos at the further side of the stage. Prithee, do you say that my husband is carousing here together with my son, and that he has carried to his mistress twenty minae of silver, and that with the knowledge of my son his father is perpetrating this wickedness? Trust me in nothing henceforth, either divine or human, Artemona if you find me untruthful in this matter oh wretched then am i who have supposed that beyond others my husband was sober decent chaste and especially fond of his wife but now henceforth understand that he before all men is a person of the smallest worth a drunkard a good-for-nothing fellow unchaste and a contemner of his own wife hey, faith if this wasn't true, he would never be doing the things that he is now doing. Upon my word, I too always hitherto took him to be a decent person. But by this action he declares himself to be carousing, indeed, together with his son and a decrepit old man, toying with a mistress in his company. For this it is a faith that he is going out to dinner every day. He says that he is going to Archidemus, Curias. Kyristratus, Clinius, Cremis, Cretinus, Dinias, Demosthenes, while he's thinking of debauchery and public dens of infamy with this harlot. Why don't you bid your maid servants carry him off home upon their shoulders? Do you only be quiet? By my troth, I'll surely give him some trouble i'm sure of it that so it will befall him so long indeed as you shall continue married to him i was fancying that this fellow was still giving attendance either in the senate or to his dependents that for that reason it was that worn out with fatigue he snored the whole night through wearied with his labours out of doors he comes home at night another's farm he ploughs his own he leaves untilled both he himself is corrupted, and he corrupts his son as well. If you only follow me this way, I'll make you just now to fall upon the man himself in the very fact. By heaven, there's nothing that I could more wish for. Uh, just stop there. He moves stealthily forward and examines the other side of the stage. What's the matter? Parasite, returning to her. If perchance you were to see your husband reclining, if you beheld him with a garland on, caressing a mistress, could you recognize him? It troth, I could. Parasite points to the other end of the stage. Then there's your man. Artemona moving stealthily forward with the parasite. I'm undone. Stay a little. Let's observe in private, from ambush, what business they are about. What end will you put to your caresses, father? I confess, my son. 
What do you confess? That I'm utterly undone with love for her. Parasite to Artemona. Do you hear what he says? I hear. The Menetus to Philenium. Ought I not to filch the mantle from my wife at home, which she is so fond of, and bring it to you? Though my wife's life should last a whole year in consequence, by my troth I could not be dissuaded from doing so. Parasite to Artemona. Do you suppose that he has been accustomed to frequent a brothel to-day for the first time? Upon my faith, it was he that was pilfering me, whereas I was suspecting my maid-servants, and was tormenting the wretched creatures who were innocent all the while. Father, bid him pour out some wine. Tis a long time since I drank first. The Menetus to the Servant begin boy from the top to philenium come do you meanwhile from below give me a kiss kiss her, sir artemona to the parasite wretch that i am i'm undone how the villain the garnishing of a beer is kissing away a breath by my faith somewhat sweeter than that of my wife tell me there's a dear does the breath of your wife smell bad I'd prefer to drink bilge water if it were necessary, rather than kiss her. Artemona apart. By heavens, you are a wretch. If faith, he's deserving so to be. How say you, father? Takes a draw in the meanwhile. Artemona apart. I pray, how say you? By my troth. To your own great detriment, you've surely said that against me. Never mind. Only do you come home. I'll let you know what danger there is in speaking abusively against a wife with a dowry. Don't you love my mother? Who? I? I love her just now, because she isn't present. How? When she is present? Then... I wish she was dead. Parasite, apart to Artemona. This fellow is fond of you, according to what he says. On my word, he is surely laying out all this at interest, for if this day he returns home, I'll especially have my revenge in kissing him. Argeripus handing the dice box. Father, throw the dice, that afterwards I may have a throw by all means you philenium for myself and death for my wife he throws tis venus's cast lads clap your hands and give me some honeyed wine in my cup in honour of my throw artemona apart oh, i can hold out no longer if you haven't learnt the falling trade it's not to be wondered at now it's quite fitting for you to beset his eyes they make their appearance before the revellers by heavens i will live and you this day have made that invocation to your own great misfortune will someone run out to fetch the undertaker health to you mother health indeed after this fashion parasite aside damanditus is dead Tis time to betake myself hence. This battle bravely waxes hot. I'll be off to Diabolus. I'll tell him his orders are performed as he desired them, and in the meantime I'll persuade him that we should take a meal while these people are squabbling. Afterwards, in fine, I'll bring him here to-morrow to the Procurus, that he may give her the twenty manae, that in his turn he in his passion may be enabled to obtain this damsel." I hope that Argerippus be able to be prevailed upon to allow him to pass each alternate night with him in her company, for unless I obtain that, I've lost my patron. So great is the passion of the man by reason of his love. He quietly withdraws. Artemona addressing Philenium. What business have you to give a retreat here in your house to my husband? Troth, 
he really will this day be the death of wretched me through sheer disgust artemona to the Menetus. rise wencher be off home i'm undone yes you are don't in faith gainsay it you most vile of all men why the cuckoo's still on his nest rise wencher be off home woe to me you prophesy correctly rise wencher be off home step a little this way then rise wencher be off home now prithee wife how do you remember now that i'm your wife it was but just now when you were heaping abuse upon me that i wasn't your wife i'm utterly ruined why pray does the breath of your wife smell strong it smells of myrrh have you filched my mantle then to be giving to your harlot by the powers what did he promise that he would filch your mantle won't you hold your tongue i was going to dissuade him mother a pretty son to the Menetus. is it proper for a father to teach these morals to his children are you ashamed of nothing in faith if there's nothing else i'm ashamed of you wife with your hoary head your wife is dragging you you cuckoo from dens of infamy the dinner's cooking mayn't i stop only to take my dinner faith you'll dine to-day on a heavy mishap as you deserve the manitus rising i shall repose but uncomfortably my wife is taking me home condemned i told you father not to devise ill against my mother philenium to the manitus do remember about the mantle there's a dear the Menetos calls out to Clareta. Won't you order her to go away from here? No, I'll go in, in preference. To Argeripus. Follow me this way, my life. Yes, I follow. Artemona to the Menetos. Be off home. Philenium to the Menetos. Do give me a kiss, at least, before you go. Uh, go hang yourself. Exant. The company of comedians. If this old fellow, unknown to his wife, has been in any way indulging his own inclinations, he has been doing nothing new or wonderful or otherwise than others are in the habit of doing. No one is there of a disposition so severe or of a temper so firm but that he will enjoy himself when he has any opportunity now if you wish to interpose in behalf of this old man so that he be not punished we think that it can be brought about if you give us loud applause end of act five end of asinaria or the ass dealer by titus magius plotus translated by henry thomas ridley